Persuasion is hard. Influencing is difficult. Well, it is if you don't understand what I'm going to show you in this video. Who doesn't want to be more persuasive and more influential? So why aren't you? Well, for a lot of people, it's not just a matter of having the right skills or the right knowledge. What I see over and over is people aren't paying enough attention to themselves. In other words, how well can you influence yourself? And how well do you think you can influence others if you can't even influence yourself? So what do I mean by all this? Well, before I get into it, if you find yourself liking this video along the way, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button right down here. I'm also for a very limited time, meaning I think we might only have a week left where I will, I am making a three part video series available to you for free. But like I said, it is going away and you will find it in the description below. If you are watching this video a few days from now and it's not there, I apologize. But like I said, this free training will only be made available temporarily. People often ask me because I teach NLP, I do NLP, and I do a lot of videos on NLP. I've done actually plenty of videos on persuasion and influence. So people are always asking me what are better ways to persuade? What are better ways to influence? The sense I get about this is that people think that if only they could be better at persuading, if only they could be better at influencing, then it would solve all of their problems. Maybe not all of their problems, but it would solve a lot of their problems. Well, if I could persuade and influence better, I could do better in sales and I could make more money. If I could persuade, persuade and influence better, I could get my wife or my husband to do what it is that I want and my marriage would be happier. If I could get my kids to do what I want them to do, then my relationship with my kids would be better. So yes, in general, uh, being able to persuade and influence well is an incredible skill to have. In fact, you will see that the majority of the most successful people possess this ability to some degree and maybe only in certain ways. So like some people can be really be good and persuasive in a certain context, but maybe not in another. But whatever you wanna be successful in, you do have to have a certain level or ability to persuade and influence because that's really where we have to get other people on board to help us with the ideas that we wanna execute. If we wanna do anything great, very few things that are great are done in a vacuum or alone. So we do have to recruit people. We have to get people on our side. We have to get people coming along with us and doing what it is that we want to do. But what I find is that so often people are completely overlooking themselves. So are you influenceable? It's probably not a real word, but <laughs> do you ever stop to consider that? Now, I think a lot of people like to think of themselves as being beyond influence or above influence, because if you're easy to influence, most people will think about that as, well, that means I'm gullible. So if that's the way you're thinking of influence, then, are you trying to influence other people in a sense thinking that they are gullible as well? Or are you trying to find their gullible side? Or are you trying to draw out their, their side of them that doesn't understand or doesn't know? And I would say if that's how you're trying to influence, well, you got a big problem there because if you're influencing people based on their gullibility, uh, that will come back to bite you. You will get buyer's remorse if it's something you're trying to sell them like like an actual sales trans transaction or just in selling yourself. Eventually those people will wise up. <laughs> and, and also just that idea of like, well, you're trying to take advantage of someone who is either uh, lacking some knowledge or are lacking brain power. That's not going to help you out very well. That You're going to end up turning that back on yourself and, and it, it just creates a lot of problems. So if you're not influenceable, yet you're expecting other people to be, well, that's a problem right there. I've done a video series on manipulation and it seems to get me in trouble with everyone. Uh, they will say, the people who don't watch the video say, how dare you, how could you? Uh, I thought you were a nice guy, I thought you were authentic and this and that and this and that. And I will say to them, okay, well, you obviously didn't watch the video. Please go watch the video and then go watch the video. And go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean it. Uh, and it's like, okay, no problem, but make sure you, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, actually look into something. And then there was those people, still are, those people who really want to manipulate people. And so they go watch the video and then they're upset with me because I didn't give them like the secrets to really sort of hurting people. And I'm like, why would you want to do that? We don't want to hurt people. We do want to influence people. And you don't have to want to, you already do. You cannot not influence. You're doing it all the time. And then it goes the other way too you cannot not be influenced by others and not just others. I mean, it, it's whatever your environment is, you are being influenced all 
the time and you are influencing all the time. And so in that video, the video, video series with manipulation, I'm trying to explain to people that you are manipulating all the time. Now, that doesn't mean that you're trying to hurt people. It doesn't mean that you're trying to take advantage of people in a way that you come out ahead and they come out, you know, lacking or without. No, that's not the case with manipulation. It can be, but it's, it doesn't have to be. It's just people don't like that word. And so, I, yes, I used it to be controversial. Um, but maybe an easier word would be influence. So if you're being influenced all the time and you're influencing all the time, then what? What, you know, what do you do with that? Well, that's where we bring more conscious awareness to what is happening here. Basically, what NLP teaches you is how you're already influencing anyway and how you are being how you are being influenced anyway. A lot of times I hear people say, well, you know, I, I'll teach an NLP technique and they say, well, I do that anyway. And I say, okay, I'm not going to argue with that. I, I agree with you. NLP was modeled after things that successful people do anyway, but not just successful people. It's things that we do anyway. It's that successful people know how to do it in such a way that gets them what they want. And so, yes, that's true. And a lot of times I think people want to write NLP off by saying, well, I do that anyway. Yes, but how consciously aware are you doing it and are you doing it to get what you want and is it working? You know, that's what we need to understand here. So here's the thing that I, that might sound overly simplistic and you might say, well, I knew that already. Yeah, but look, take a look at your life and really check in if you know truly what it is that I'm about to say. So again, I want to repeat, you cannot not influence and you cannot not be influenced. But what you can do is you can choose your influences. This is so, so important. And so we've all heard things like you're the, you're the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. And I don't know if the sum total uh, I agree with part, but you are definitely a product of those influences, the people who influence you the most, your surroundings, however that influences you. I live in sunny California and I gotta tell you, being around lots of sun and beach and mountains has a tremendously better influence on me than when I was living in Louisiana and there's a lot of rain and there's a lot of cloudy skies. Not this in uh, Louisiana, but I, <laughs> I find myself being much happier in environments like this. Also, uh, the, the town that I live in, it, they, people tend to eat healthier and are more uh, socially conscious. And I want to be that way too. So I put myself in these positions where I'm influenced by the influences that I, I want to be influenced by. So often we are still hanging around with people who are probably well-meaning people. They're fine people. I'm not trying to put them down and say they're less than anyone else. Not at all. But what kind of influence are they having over your life? I remember, uh, well, pretty much all throughout my life, whenever I would aspire to do something better than what I was already doing, when I wanted to improve on something and I was actually starting to work toward it, the people around me would start making fun of me immediately. And it was like, you know, kind of like this, you know, how, how dare you think that you're going to sort of up your position in life. And I think some of this was just sort of like, you know, you have friends that are just going to kind of give you those little pokes in the ribs or little jabs and, and just, you know, it's all in fun. And I think that's absolutely okay. But what happens after that? Do they really support you in this or do they really sort of try to take you back down? What often happens is th and the person, your, your friends don't even realize this is happening. They've categorized you a certain way. And the moment you start to step outside of that category, for some of them, this becomes really uncomfortable and they don't even understand it. And this is even before the whole jealousy part can, can even be factored in because you may not even be achieving what it is that you want. You might not have even proved that you can do what it is that you're trying to do. But this idea that you're stepping outside of the box that they have so nicely and neatly and comfortably put you in starts to make them feel uncomfortable. And again, this is happening mostly unconsciously for them, so they don't they don't understand it. But instead of having to change their category of you or their belief of you, it's much easier to try to get you in, in their mind anyway, to go back into the box and be categorized in the way that they originally categorized you. Now, a truly good friend is going, or a truly good influence and a good friend is gonna recognize that you're growing out of the box that they put you in and they go, and then they have to check back in and say, well, well maybe, you know, maybe I, I don't have an accurate understanding of who you are. And then they become supportive of you and then they try to get you to, yeah, like grow out of that box, you know, be become what it is that you wanna become. Now, your really good friends are gonna do that for you. And even if the other friends of yours who are not doing that and actually trying to put you back in that box, you can say many good things about them. You could say, well, you know, I don't want to leave them behind. Well, in a sense, they're kind of leaving themselves behind. 
you know, and so it's, yes, they can be well-meaning people, they can be good friends, but you want to spend your time around the people who are encouraging you to grow out of all of those boxes. You want to spend time with information that is getting you where you want to go. Like step back and, you know, think about that. How much time are you spending playing video games or listening or watching things that are more like junk food? Or how much time are you actually spending on junk food? These are the things we need to, to, to look at. Now, this, this does not mean at all that you should rid these things completely out of your life. Not at all, because if that kind of austerity and rigidity will make you come flying back to the other side, you don't want to do that. We need to have a little bit of junk food in life. We need to have a little bit of, you know, doing things that aren't productive. All those things are important. But think about like the 80-20 rule. How much of your time is being spent around influences that are not influencing you in the direction of where you want to go in the life that you want to live? If you take a look at your life and you, you think about where you want your life to be, the life that you want to create and the person you want to be, and you, you get really honest with yourself and you say, okay, well, how close am I to that? And maybe you feel like you're kind of halfway there, whatever that means to you. And then you take a look at the influences you surround yourself with. Are those influences going to get you the rest of that way, that extra 50%? Or is it the influences you're surrounding yourself with, are they keeping you at that midline level? Now remember, most of us think that we're not so easily influenced. We think that we can spend two hours a day playing video games or you know, two hours uh, a day drinking with our friends and that doesn't influence us. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you cannot not be influenced. So these things are influencing you. So the influences in your life are not getting you where you want to be. It's time to take inventory of that and time to start surrounding yourself with more influences that will get you there. Now, the same thing goes in the other direction. Now, most people probably clicked on this video because they wanted to learn how to be more influential. Well, the same thing goes in that direction too. I think most people only, they, they're very short-sighted when it comes to influence. They think, oh, well, I wanna know how to persuade an influence because I wanna make this sell. Or, you know, I want this woman to go out on a date with me. Or I want my husband, my wife to, to do this one or two things or my, my children to do this one or two things. True influence and persuasion really needs to go steps beyond that. You really need to see beyond those things. And what I mean by that is, who do you want to be perceived as, as an influencer? And that, the same goes for, for YouTube or even social media influence. When I think about my channel and I think about these videos, like I, I want to think about, well, who, how do I want you, the audience, to perceive me? And that informs how I'm going to influence on my videos. So you can do that with, like I said, social media. Or, you know, think about when the people you want to influence, how do you want to be perceived by them? And how is it that your influence is going to help them get what they want in some way. People are self-interested and that's not a bad thing. That's just how it is. We are self-interested. People are not going to do what you want them to do unless they perceive that there's something in it for them. So knowing that, how is it that you can then influence people and how is it you want to be perceived when you're influencing them that indicates to them that they're getting something out of this. They are getting some sort of value out of it. So it doesn't, you know, instead of being that sort of transactional, can I get that person to sign the deal? Can I get that person to cross this line or cross the finish line in the, in the, the race that I want to win and start saying, okay, well, how do I want to be perceived as an influencer so that people want to be influenced by me people want to do what I think or want to go in the direction that I'm going because it serves them in some sort of way and because it serves them or whatever they're doing, it serves them and it's also serving me. And that's how you create something long-term. That's how you create, that's how you build influence and that's how you create long-term influence. And here's the thing, people start to pick up on your influence. They, you know, that person who you're influencing then tells somebody else about, you know, this person that's influencing them and then you gain more people or people just overall see that people are, are paying attention to you and that creates more influence. So this whole thing creates momentum and it compounds on itself. But you gotta get beyond the limited thinking of the very simple thing that you want to influence people to do. Uh, that's important, I'm not saying forget about it, but you gotta go beyond it. You gotta, you gotta really think in terms of what is the value that you're providing them if they go along with your influence. So think of it from both directions. Again, you cannot not be influenced and you cannot not influence. Knowing that, think this thing through 
to a much further direction to beyond the, the limits of which you've been thinking about it so far. And you will start persuading like a natural, you'll start influencing like a natural. It won't feel to you like you're, you're being inauthentic or fake. In fact, just the opposite. You'll start really aligning with what it is that you value. You'll start align, aligning with your authenticity and your truth so much more. And so it won't become like the little sales technique that you know, you're know you gonna implement or the little NLP processor technique that you can you know, get people to, to sort of go the direction that you want to go. Not that those things are invalid, they're, they're valid. But when you do it with an overall vision of how you want to influence and how you yourself want to be influenced, you don't have to put so much emphasis on, on those little processes and techniques. This thing sort of takes off naturally. Remember that you are the one, first and foremost, who needs to be influenced before you can even really focus on influencing others. So how are you being influenced? Choose your influence. So, so important. Choose your influence. Choose how you want to be influenced and choose how you want to influence. And this is an ongoing thing. This is something that you never quite finish or arrive at. It's an ongoing process because that is life. Life, is, life continues on. So as, as long as you're alive, you should always be asking these questions and reevaluating it. And I assure you, the more you do this, the less you'll have to think about the, the little right technique. And it's just so much more about you're, you're living your truth and you know how to express it and you know how to receive it in the sense of you know how to receive influence because you're choosing, you're consciously choosing the influence and what you want to be influenced by so that you create the life that you want to live. So if you want to take this much, much deeper to the identity level, if you go down to the description below, you will see that there's a link. Click on that link. And for a limited time, there will be a video series that is free, completely, completely new material that I've never put out there before that you can access. And like I said, it is for a limited time. So if you're watching this video a few weeks after it was published and it's not there, we'll, we'll put something else in there for you. But if you know if this video series is not there, that's because it's only there for a short amount of time. So I apologize. Uh, will it be made available again? I don't know. But if you're watching this video and that those videos are available, uh, this new training is available, make sure you jump on it now. Like I said, it, it, is going, it is going to go away. Check it out. I'm looking forward to your feedback on it. Also, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button and that bell so you'll be notified when I put new videos out, which tends to be every Wednesday and every Saturday. And last but not least, if you can think of a friend or a family member who would benefit from this video, Make sure you share it with them. Take care.